are blessed welcome back to my channel i am charlene hope you guys can hear me well it's my understanding that now the volume was an issue but i'm sorry um i'm reading the proverbs again i am now in proverbs 119 and the verse that stuck out to me today was the very last verse that i decided to read i would delight in your statues I would not forget your word. And that is Psalms 119, verse 16 in the ESV translation. And I am reading from my Jesus Bible. This is where I'm in Psalm. I'm sorry. Yeah, Psalms and Proverbs in. <sighs> Yo, like I said, I know that God has dealt with me about a lot. I know my convictions may not be the same as everyone else, but I always ask God to help me to help someone else. That's my prayer, right? So I don't just come out and say, okay, y'all stop reading 20 chapters a day. I'm not going to outright say that. However, what I am saying is if the purpose is a finish line that is physical and not spiritual, then you're reading God's word in vain. The whole point of us reading this word is to get to know God. This word is a weapon towards Satan and his enemies, um, or our enemies, I should say. So how can we use a weapon that we are unfamiliar with? You have to be able to take time to digest God's word in pieces so that it can be imprinted on your mind. I don't know about you, but I'm a fast reader and I can easily sit here and read five chapters, but how much of that five chapter setting will I retain and let alone comprehend, remember in times of trial and struggle or warfare? How, how much of that will you think I will remember? And I can honestly answer you probably none or close to none, even with me taking it slow with the pieces in here of four or five verses i still sometimes have to go back and reread and reread and reread and write it out and do everything i can to make sure that it sticks and i just say that to say you have to be careful about this is where the problem comes in where we as the youtuber we project what we do and, and what we say and what we feel and a lot of people take it and run with it and it's considered a guideline but your guideline, your rubric for understanding God, his word, uh, your quiet time routine, I would say and suggest to you that you pray to God about what would be best for you because God didn't make any of us the same. And there are some standards. Like I can honestly, without feeling any type of way, uh, encourage reading a chapter um, the chapters in the Bible are designed and put together in a way where you should be able to get context sometimes. I ain't even going to flex right now. There's been some chapters that I'm like, hmm, I feel like something's missing or it doesn't really quite flow or it, it's not, it doesn't sound like a beginning. And I wish I had an exact example, whereas I was almost forced to go back up a chapter and then be like, ah, oh, okay, this is a continuing conversation. Context, context is everything. And sometimes you have to work hard and sometimes you probably don't want to, but this is why you have to set a guideline that is feasible for you. A chapter, it's not too much. And then if you have to go back a chapter, that's still not too much. Um, Hardly ever will you probably feel like you need to go a ch chapter forward, but you still have to be careful about how much you read, um, how fast you're reading. Um, are you zooming through? Or are you just checking off a box? A lot of us have environments that they don't really work well with uh, quiet time and um having these long periods of solitude where you can just 
meditate on God's word. You know, you got a lot of kids. You got whether it be loud husbands. Um, it could be a combination of both like I have here. Um, my house is pretty loud. My children are loud. My husband is loud. Everybody um, tends to be in their own world, in a world. And it's like, sometimes, sometimes I'm uh, assertive. I say, hey. Because, you know, when you do something so much, it becomes a norm. And I think that's what happened with reading the Bible. It's just like, I have to be like, hey, <laughs> I'm actually reading, you know, you know. <laughs> even though they sing this a thousand and one times, um, which is why it was important to kind of create this space because it's like, okay, this is a definite, absolute, I'm doing something, even down to my four-year-old. He knows when the door is closed, not to knock, not to open it, not to enter without permission. He already know. Now, Bella is in training. <laughs> She sees a shut door and she doesn't like it. What what child does, right? But um, you just the effort needs to be in a complete package. I'm fighting yarns, y'all know me. But anyway, you have to. Yes, it's okay to create an atmosphere, but you also want to make sure that you have a plan in, in mind and that your goal doesn't override understanding, like. I can sit here and say, I'm definitely going to read a whole Proverbs, which that's what I had intended to do like I normally did. But this time it was like, no, that's not going to fly. Because even me thinking about how much I remember what stood out to me from my last go round and reading Proverbs, and it was very little. And it was, like I said, I think I was a chapter per day. Um, Psalms and, no, excuse me, that was Proverbs. But the same with Psalms. Um, I used to be real, real big on reading the whole Psalms until last year, like the end of last year. It was like, uh uh, like break this down, dissect it, talk to your peeps about it. It was a big deal. And I thank God for the growth and maturity because I am retaining more. I often looked at individuals who seem to be really knowledgeable in God's word. And I assumed it was because the time ratio and the amount they read matched. And that was a lie and a deceit. Like most people who are really concentrated in God's word and have a great understanding they actually go a whole lot slower than what you think. Like, it is not a brag or a boast to say, I can read a whole book in one day. It's not a brag or boast to say that I wrote out a whole chapter. If any of these things are not actually helping you understand, retain, is my main thing, my point here. Like, if I'm in warfare, if I'm in a spiritual attack, if I'm going through a trial, if somebody needs advice or I need encouragement or someone else needs encouragement, I need to be able to deliver. How can I disciple if I do not retain information myself? And here's the thing, because like I said, some things can be presented as standards and we can run with it. Like, oh, if I could just write a scripture, if I could just journal it, if I could just color it, then I'll remember. And I learned, man, no. My biggest retaining of information is when I slowed down and took bites and pieces and not try to devour the whole course of a meal. That's the real truth. And even then, some things will stick out and... I will be able to put my camera on and talk to you guys about, but it's the reading, rereading, taking a moment to think, make a note, then maybe highlight, then maybe go right later. Like those are like add-ons to me now, whereas me just praying like, Lord, help me to understand and comprehend your word and read it. 
and being able to apply it to everyday life and be practical, right? This is a blessing. Um, I pray and hope that each and every one of you take time today to pray to God and ask, Lord, what will help me? What will benefit me? What will um, help me to retain, Lord God? Help me to hold on to your word. Help me to remember. And I even go a step further and say, it's not really about sound and all prestige excuse me, and going Psalms 119 3 says you know be able to say it without looking it's not really all about that but that friend your husband your child they come to you with a problem an issue or you have an issue and you can just remember um, your love is faithful and steadfast to me that's powerful or let me see mm. I will keep your statues do not only forsake me being able to remember that and not necessarily remember that it was verse 8 of 119 to me that's secondary like knowing God's word is, and this is his word the whole bible that's that's good enough. Like just quoting that and meditating on that and having that going on in your mind. That's helpful. That's beneficial. We'll be able to deliver that to a friend or you know how we do. We can have a conversation and we can summarize, you know, the Lord is a very present help in times of trouble and struggles. You know, we don't necessarily like even right now, I'm like, okay, what, what verse was that? What book of the Bible? You know, like, I mean, not saying it's wrong that if you are good with doing that, uh, my husband is excellent at at least remembering what book is in. I think that is dope. But I'm just saying this for the person who felt like, man, I or you looking at pastors and ministers and people on YouTube and stuff and seeing how they just go and feeling offended or feeling um, less than because they can do it and you can't. I'm telling you right now that your focus is off. Focus on just learning it. The verse and the chapter will come later. And sometimes you may get it right away. And think about how much and how long we've heard John 3, 16, that even a stranger or someone who's not even saved can quote the verse. And that's because it has been said on and on and on. And also that is our duty as Christians that we need to keep the word present and relevant. And we do that by speaking on it, by discussing it, by sharing it. This is how we keep God's word going. Um, never just hold out to yourself. Like whatever you got good, you share it, right? <sighs> Thank you for listening to me. I love you guys. God bless. Take care. Bye.